host, Maggie Smith! Coming up later, we have Ed Yonka from the Illinois ACLU coming to us tonight. But first things first, let's take a look at some headlines from the week. A new updated version of the Kama Sutra has been released that focuses on the female orgasm. So far, it's been mainly purchased by women as men can't seem to find it. <laughs> the founder of Craigslist gave City University of New York's journalism school a $20 million donation, but they had to go pick it up from some creepy dude out in the suburbs. <laughs> Fox News anchor Abby Huntsman was under fire this week for accidentally calling President Trump a dictator. She later apologized for violating Fox's strict policy against reporting facts. <laughs> According to a recent poll, teens are engaging in the least amount of sex since 1991, meaning that teens have become more comfortable lying to adults about how much sex they're having. <laughs> Disney announced a new Inside Out themed attraction. It's called Therapy. <laughs> Some scientists have claimed that bringing back the woolly mammoth could help fight climate change, while others argue it would be just easier to bring back this guy. FBI has used DNA to discover the identity of a withered ancient Egyptian mummy, the name of which was revealed to be your mom. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> In some clinical trials, psychedelic drugs are being used to treat mental disorders. Here to tell us more is senior science correspondent Brittany Bookbinder. Brittany, everyone. <laughs> So, Brittany, can you tell us a little bit more about how hallucinogenic drugs are being studied to treat these disorders? Yeah, so it turns out that hallucinogens like LSD and psilocybin, the active ingredient in magic mushrooms, are showing excellent promise in treating depression, anxiety, and even PTSD. Well, that's incredible. I had no idea. How does it work? <laughs> well, I had the same question, Maggie. That's why I went to find out firsthand in one of these trials. So the brain has... I'm sorry, did you just say firsthand? Did... <laughs> <laughs> Did you do drugs, Brittany? Only in a clinical trial. <laughs> I am still a card-carrying member of D.A.R.E. And it is not at all like doing drugs recreationally. I mean, they only give you a microdose, so you don't even trip. What? How does that even work? Well, first, uh, the doctor brought me into the room and gave me the dosage. And then the werewolf doctor asked me if I was doing OK. And then she started melting. Hang on, wait. A melting werewolf doctor, what are you talking about? It always sounds so silly to describe a deeply spiritual experience. You, you really have to do it yourself to understand what it feels like when the walls reach out and give you a hug. Yeah, no, it sounds like you tripped. Oh, no, no, I did not trip. I wasn't even standing up. I was on a couch, and then the couch was in space. No, no, and, um, I mean, you hallucinated. But I, I didn't mean to. Am I gonna get in trouble? I doubt it. I mean, you were with doctors in a hospital. Plus, white people never get arrested for doing drugs. Yeah, <laughs> but it's still illegal. Yeah, about that, why are they illegal if they're so effective? Oh, they showed me a video about it at the hospital. Okay, so in a time before what we now call now, a nose man with two fingers on each hand? Richard Nixon? Yeah. <laughs> he waged a terrible war on drugs. Yeah, I just mine. feel like we're not gonna get any information whoa, out of you, whoa, so. Whoa, Maggie, calm down. Your fur is changing colors. Oh, you know what's crazy? I never noticed until right now that you're a squirrel. <laughs> Brittany, when uh -huh. did the wolf doctor give you the LSD? You know, it feels like a century ago, but it was at 7 p.m. <laughs> all right, that's all we have time for, guys. Brittany Bookbinder, everyone. Someone take care of her. Bye. Bye. Most doctors will tell you not to use a Q-tip to clean your ear because it can damage your hearing. That's why we use secret tips. For the Q-tips that don't care where you stick them. Put them wherever you want. It'll be our little secret. Secret tips are not responsible for any form of sexy hearing loss. Okay, welcome.
welcome back to the news. Today we're going to talk about rotting, festering piles of garbage. What? No. no, guys, I meant that literally. Today we're going to be talking about composting. Now, composting is one of those things that you know that you should do but think you probably never will, like changing your water filter or voting for Dianne Feinstein. <laughs> but why should we compost? In short, to keep things out of landfills, because landfills, like Kanye's Twitter, get worse with time. <laughs> Okay, so what makes landfills so bad? Well, it turns out when a bunch of shit is tossed together in enormous piles to rot, it causes pollution, lots of it. <laughs> Chemicals from landfills ruin the surrounding soil, they leak toxins into the water system, affecting both wildlife and people, and they pollute the air by releasing what scientists call a shit ton of methane gas. <laughs> it's the biggest culprit in climate change, so. You know what, actually, um, <laughs> Due to recent EPA regulations, scientists aren't allowed to say methane gas anymore, so now it's called America Mist. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, you know what, I checked the EPA's website section on climate change to see what they have to say about it, but it's been down since April of 2017. You know, just to be safe, can we refresh that? Yeah, no, still, still nothing. And you know what, what's more, a lot of times landfills, like everyone at work, are not doing their jobs. <laughs> As landfills get piled and piled on with plastic, food waste, and my applications to law schools, <laughs> often the garbage inside is no longer exposed to oxygen and therefore cannot break down. To put that in context, garbologists, which, side note, that's the real job of a person who studies garbage and not, as I had previously thought, fans of 1930s Swedish-American actress Greta Garbo. <laughs> Garbologists have discovered foods thrown out decades ago that have not decomposed. One garbologist found a tub of guacamole thrown out on, in 1967 that was perfectly preserved. Guacamole, a food that goes bad immediately. <laughs> and I thought the only thing perfectly preserved from the 60s was systematic racism. Now. It was also guac. Now, there's no end in sight to our production of garbage, so these piles of trash are just going to keep growing unless we start making some changes. But luckily, some changes are being made in Canada. <laughs> Last month, Ontario announced that by 2022, it will ban organic materials, meaning things like food waste, coffee filters, and bodies, all of which are perfectly <laughs> compostable from being thrown out in the trash. And they'll supply the bins for the compost, just like we have for trash and for recycling ourselves. Composting will become a normal part of their trash throwing out experiences. Just makes me think I probably should have moved to Canada like I swore I would. <laughs> right now I'd be hosting, oh sorry, it's the news with Maggie Smith, eh? <laughs> If you're watching this and you don't live in Canada, but composting is still something you're interested in, and you're not a serial killer, that's great news. <laughs> but for those of you who are, I don't know, I guess I'll take it. <laughs> so here's how you can start. Best case scenario, you have your own yard or garden, in which case you can just start a literal pile of compost wherever you want and watch it turn into soil richer than Greta Garbo in her heyday. Hashtag <laughs> garbologists. <laughs> And if you, like me, have forsaken green spaces and opted to live in a city to follow your dream of one day paying the most while living in the smallest amount of space, <laughs> then use a composting service. I actually use one myself. It's called the Urban Canopy, which for a monthly fee delivers a bucket to me that they take away two weeks later after I filled it up with banana peels as revenge for what they did to me in Mario Kart. <laughs> If you live in Chicago, please sign up for Urban Canopy using this link here. If you live in a different city, use this link. It will help you find compost pickup service based on your zip code. If you're interested in Greta Garbo, click this link. It takes you to sign up for the Urban Canopy. <laughs> no matter what you click, remember, reduce, reuse, recycle, and remember to compost because landfills stink. <laughs> Here at Subaru, safety is our goal. Introducing the new Subaru Liberty, a car so safe, you can't even get in it. Hello? My car, mine. It 
Subaru Liberty. Get in today. <laughs> Maybe. Welcome back to the news. Tonight I am joined by the Director of Communications and Public Policy for the American Civil Liberties Union of Illinois, Ed Yonka. Ed, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, Ed, you're here to talk about what has been going on on the border with regards to families being separated. Can you just kind of break it down for us? What is happening? Well, what we really have is kind of a rolling human rights crisis on our southern border that was created by the Trump administration. They made a decision some months ago to begin doing two things. First, they decided that when people came in to uh, ask for asylum, among other things, that they were going to separate families, separate children from their parents. And in some instances, even fly those children thousands of miles away to places that the parents had no idea even existed, let alone where they were, give them little contact with them in the most in inhumane way. After that, in uh, just a few weeks ago, they declared what they called a zero tolerance policy so that anyone who entered was going to be criminally prosecuted. Remember that entering the United States without documents is a civil offense. Um, but they can prosecute you for the actual, or being present, but they can prosecute you for the actual act of crossing the border. So what they did was they began to prosecute everyone, and when they took people into detention, they then took their children into detention separately as well. Sometimes children as young as a year, 18 months old, etc., and separated them from their parents. What is worse, and I think what is the most horrific part of this, is that they have actually then deported many of these parents without their children. And as we sit here tonight, I can tell you, Maggie, that it will take years for these families to be reunited. And I think it's not a stretch to say that there are some children who will never see their parents again because of our government using our tax dollars. So um, you mentioned right off the bat that this is from the Trump administration. And right. blame is like the thing I'm not the yeah. most worried about here. Yeah. But one thing that is also happening, just to clear up things, is it's being pointed fingers at, oh, this has been happening for years and years now. Right. This is an old policy. So when did what we're seeing right now actually start? What we're seeing right now began in February of this year. But it was cranked up in March and in April of this year and into May. What had happened before was that when an unaccompanied minor, uh, basically a teenager, crossed the border and presented themselves and asked for asylum, that child was often taken into detention and put in a, in a foster home or a facility like that, and they were held. And the majority of the children are kids in this direction, yes? That's another thing a lot of supporters of the of what is happening or saying is, oh, only a small percentage are being separated from their family. A lot of them are also just teenagers. Is that well, incorrect? That, that, that's incorrect, really. Great. So what happened, that, that was the, the, the usual thing. What has happened over about the last eight weeks is that the, the government has separated about 66 children a day from their parents. Think about this. This is like, think of two oversized elementary school classrooms just disappearing not being there when their parents came to pick them up. That's what's happened every day for about the last six weeks. So what you've gone is from about 700 children who were separated from their parents back in uh, early April to more than 2,000 children or about 2,200 today. And in, in many cases, you know, they move these kids around to spaces where they had space, where they could uh, shelter them, where they could house them. And, and because they've changed between the um, department or uh, the, the ICE agents in DHS to Homeland or to uh, HHS to Health and Human Services, sometimes they don't even know where these children are uh, in terms of this. This is, a, this is a level of cruelty that we've just never seen in our lifetime. As you know, the president issued an executive order today, which frankly doesn't look like it does anything. What does it look like it does? This is, this is very recent news. I think it looks like the president got a chance to sign his name on TV. <laughs> That's what I think it looks like. What we don't know, the two things, uh, already this evening they are reporting uh, that they will not take any action to actually reunite the children they've already separated from their parents. So this is just a prospective uh, 
um, order going forward. But the other thing is they say they're only going to do that. On, they're even going to keep kids together with their parents um, in detention. So now we're going to have family detention. And the second thing is, is that it does look like um, they're saying they will only do that on the basis of space and resources. So if they don't have the resources to keep families together, it looks like they have an out to keep splitting them up. And, and again, this is incredibly cruel uh, and just something that we shouldn't abide. So if you're a supporter of this, what are, what are the arguments being made, I guess, on the other side of this? Like, how do we get here and why is this happening? Um, I think there's two things that are happening that, that is how we got here. The first is, uh, we often think about the Trump administration and its attack on immigrants and immigrant rights as being people who are undocumented. What they really want to do is to limit almost all legal immigration. And so part of what the goal is here and the idea is, is that if you create such a hardship for people who come lawfully, it is not illegal to claim asylum in the United States. That if you, if you create a situation that is so harmful, that creates such obstacles, that is so difficult, that nobody will come. That's the first thing that's happening. The second thing that, that you're hearing from the supporters are, oh, these are kids who are, you know, they're just all terrorists, or they're just all gang members, or they're just all being sent by cartels. And frankly, there's no evidence of that. Um, but, you know, I think this is, you know, this is a, a thing that's happening. And I don't think it's a coincidence, by and large, that this is happening on our southern border and not on our northern border. I think this is also based on race and clearly uh, an attempt to limit immigration by people of color. Okay. Um, I don't know what the answer to this question is, and I hope there's an answer to this question. If you're watching this, if you're here, is there anything that you can do? Yes. Okay, what is it? So, so here's, the, here's the, I think there are three things that I would say that people can do, and all of them start with vote. If you hate these, if you hate these policies, you should find out what your member of Congress thinks of them, and if they support them, I would encourage you to vote for someone else. The second thing is, is that we should demand, we should demand that Congress hold hearings on this, hold oversight hearings, understand exactly what's happening, make them account for every person. The Department of Homeland Security secretary was an embarrassment the other day when she couldn't even describe where children are held or what that is. We need that kind of oversight in this. And the third thing is there should not be another dime that goes to fund ICE to, to help fund this machinery. One of the things that is incredibly dangerous here is they have created this machinery and this mechanism. They are talking about building camps and sites at military bases. And once they have that, they will fill all of those beds. And so every member of Congress should be put on notice that they are not to vote for one more penny to fund any of this. I wish we were here under better circumstances, I wish Ed. so too. Thank you so much Thank for being you, here. Ed Young, everyone. Thank you. For President Trump, the American flag is like a magnet. Oh.